I am back with another interesting story for you. This is Joyce Knows Who Done It. How are you? I hope you are having a terrific day. I am. I'm busy today, but I like being busy. Um, listen, if you like this channel, subscribe. Share, share, share. I always say that. Share. Leave a comment. Let me know what you think about this particular story. And always thumbs up and hey, ring the bell too. That way you'll know when I drop a new one. Um, this is an interesting story. This happened from um, the Jenny Jones show. And if you were like me back in the 90s, you watched some of the daytime talk show. There was a lot of daytime talk show and um, Sally Jesse Raphael. Um, gosh, now I can't think of any. <laughs> um, Geraldo Rivera. Um, oh, gosh, what's the black guy name? Uh, the military guy. I can't think of his name, but there were uh, uh, Montel show. Yeah, it was the Montel show. He'd always have uh, Sylvia on there doing her psychic readings. I shouldn't say that, but always doing her psychic readings. Um, yeah, there was a lot of shows, and Jenny Jones was one of them. Jenny Jones was um, a little bit late to the game in terms of talk shows. They had been on for quite a while, and they just kept adding more and more. And Jenny started off as a pretty good show, and then they started going into, um, you know, the silliness of talk shows. And she started doing these dating shows where you would have someone have a secret crush on you, and then your friend would tell you to come to the show, and you'd find out who this crush was. Well, that is one of these shows. This particular show, it was Same Sex Crushes, um, something that I think may have done before. But nothing like this particular episode. So there was a young man by the name of Scott Amador that came on the show. And um, he was a gay guy. And he had this crush on this real cute other guy in his home, from his hometown in Michigan. And um, they had a lady friend with them. And she was sort of a mutual friend to both Scott as well as the crush. Now, she had told the crush to come down to the show and some beautiful girl has got a crush on you and just wait. You're going to be super surprised. And um, the guy did come to the show. So they talked to Scott and they talked. Scott talked about how much he was crushing on this particular guy. At this time, we don't know the guy's name. We haven't seen him. And actually, um, I've seen clips of it. They've never aired that particular show because of the murder. But anyway, Scott goes on and proclaims his his infatuation with this guy and how sexy this guy is and, and all of that. And the young lady really trying to call herself being a friend, um, one of these kind of friends, but kind of nosy type friends that wants to be in everybody's business and help everybody. So she got... Like I said, the other person to come. When the other, when Jenny called the crush in, we'll call him the crush, he came in, came on stage, he looked at Scott, he was totally shot, and he looked at the girl and he said, I knew it, I knew this is what who was going to be. Now, the guy's name was Jonathan Schmitz. Jonathan was shocked, not shocked, if you know what I mean. Like he was hoping it was some beautiful girl that had a crush on him, but it was Scott. And he seemed as if he had knew Scott, not necessarily knew him well, but he knew of him. And of course he was friends to the girl. Um, so once, um, you know, everyone applauded and all of that, Jonathan sat down and Jenny kind of just kind of prodded and pushed the situation. And it was asking Jonathan, did he know that Scott had a crush on him? And he's like, no, he made it clear. I'm heterosexual. I'm not gay. Scott is cool. I'm not attracted to him like that. And she still allowed Scott to proclaim his feelings on national TV for Jonathan. Jonathan was holding this weird smile on his face that looked like he was okay with it, but not really. Okay. And, um... He just kept this sort of weird grin, like he was speechless at this point. So the show went on, everyone laughed, and Jonathan felt everyone laughed at him. Because it, as it turned out, Jonathan had a long history of mental illness. Now they get back to their home state, and Jonathan is totally upset. 
Jonathan is completely upset. Um, in fact, Jenny, before the show even ended, was priding him. Are you guys, you think you might go out, you know, for a date or, you know, just hang out or something sometimes. And Scott was saying how much he would love to. And Jonathan was, uh, you know, we'll see that type of thing. So once they got home, Jonathan began to stew on this issue and it got him madder and madder. He ended up going over to Scott's house and caught Scott um, outside and ended up shooting him and killing him. Um, immediately, Jonathan was arrested. Now, they went ahead with the trial on him and he was convicted of second degree murder and a felony with firearms. Um, he appealed the case. I don't know why. Um, everyone heard it. People saw it. But he appealed the case. But of course, it still went in his against him. And he was given 25 to 50 years. Um, now, as time, this happened in the whole thing, the trial and everything happened, 95, 96, <clears throat> excuse me, 97. And then in um, May 7th of 1999, <clears throat> actually, Scott's family sued Jenny Jones and the Time Warner Pictures Company because they said that they were liable for Amador's death. Um, because Jenny was prompting it on and kept pushing and pushing to try to get them together. Jonathan had already made it clear that he was not homosexual. He was not interested. And people were laughing about it and making a big joke out of it. Well, ultimately, the Amador family was awarded $29 million. But, of course, it doesn't go like that. So, um, the lawyers for Time Warner, Jenny Jones... Um, because those were big time lawyers, they went and they appealed the case and they won the appeal and were attempting to get the money not only lowered, but have that decision vacated. But what actually happened was the Amador family took the case to the state Supreme Court in Michigan and the state Supreme Court upheld the findings that um, they needed to pay the $29 million. This is quite an interesting story, and it does speak to the mental illness of this young man, but it also speaks to the ego of these people. So I want to take a look first at Scott. Even though Scott um, didn't necessarily prompt the situation, he still was clearly involved in the situation, and even though he was the victim, his birthday was January 26, 1963. So when I look at the numbers for that time, that year was a number six year. And for um, Scott, that meant that he was in a number six um, personal year. Just meaning that, um, not that that equated to being murdered, but it just spoke to how busy he was and how much responsibility he was and how much people trusted him, how much people relied on him. And it was always that way for him. His life path, however, was a number one. And I think that was kind of Scott's downfall or really not kind of, but really his downfall. A number one life path is really about when it's in when it's dignified. It's about leadership, independent thinking. I can do it on my own. People follow behind you. Um, I want to create anything that's for me. I want to show you how to do it. Um, it's that person. Ill dignified, which I think Scott was only because of his age and lack of life experience. Because when they came out to California, that was the first time he'd even flown. And so with that being the case, that would make him more, I want what I want. A number one, when it's on its negative, Ben says, I want what I want. I'm first. I'm going to do what I want to do. I want this person. I don't want to lead anything. They have a, a laziness to them that they don't want to lead. They don't want to be a stand-up person. They're just about themselves. Give me, give me, give me. And then I look at his um, his chart. I saw that he was destined for this. This was destiny 
for Scott and that his conflicts were public. He was a guy that would do things out in the open. He was flamboyant, but not overly flamboyant, but he was clear about his homosexuality with no shame, nothing, even in the 90s. Um, so he was a public person. His rising sign is Taurus. His son is Aquarius. And right there, that tells me, <clears throat> excuse me, that he liked nice things, that he liked what he liked. He uh, would love deeply that not um, that rising sign, that Taurus sign says that that Aquarius says that he could be a little bit cool. OK, but both that Taurus and Aquarius, um, Aquarius uh, sun, Aquarius moon, Aquarius Saturn, that rising Taurus says that when he makes his mind up, that's it. He's fixated on it. It also I also see that he had a Mars and Leo. So. Um, when he wasn't at his best, uh, at his best, I could, should say that he was someone people liked and that he was able to show some leadership or, um, people were drawn to him, but not at his best. He could be dominating, domineering, condescending, rude, and you could see that kind of energy off of him. So, I am not in the least bit saying blame the victim. I'm saying that it takes two to tango. And had Scott not made the decision, I don't know. It was destiny. Maybe there was, it was going to happen one way or the other. But he wanted what he wanted, what he wanted. And even knowing, he knew before he left Michigan that Jonathan was not gay. His belief, his hope, his wish, his desire was that he could change him and show him, you know, that a man could love you as well or better than a woman. That's I want what I want what I want. Not blaming him, but just lack of maturity. When I look at Jonathan, Jonathan had freedom. It always seems like that. The person that's murdered, it was destined to happen. The murderer always has the freedom to change their mind. But Jonathan was a person that liked to deal with things in private. For him to come out... And for someone to say, I want this relationship with you, oh my goodness, the, the kind of um, shame he had coupled with having an uh, unhealthy mental state of mind would be devastating. Um, his rising was Libra, and that's why he had this kind of face, this kind of smile that looked like he wouldn't hurt a cat. It, Libra men have a very amiable, pleasing type of appearance. Um, that's what they give off, this pleasing, sure I'll go along, let's get along, that type of thing. That's why he came to the show. I'm going to go along to get along. Even though he had a suspicion that Scott was the person. Even though when you see the tape, he didn't really, he showed that he didn't believe his friend, that he didn't have 100% trust in her, and he felt set up. And so he went along to go along, rather than, a regular, more mature adult would have said, nah, I don't think so. But he went along. Um, his son is in cancer. These people, they kind of keep a shield around themselves anyways. But once you, they, you get into them, they're very warm. They're very loving. They're very nurturing type of people. So I say this to say to you that he wasn't a murderer on the loose. But he murdered, if that makes sense. He's got his Mercury and Leo and his Mars and Leo. And right away, that tells me um, that just the same thing as Scott had a lot of pride and could be arrogant and domineering. Well, um, Jonathan did too. And Jonathan's Leo ego, his that, that son, I'm the son of everything, I'm the center of everything, was deeply hurt and deeply shamed. And to be shamed for someone with that Leo energy is devastating, okay? Um, he already had this kind of smug way about him when he was on the show. So now you take that and you double and triple it or 10 times it with what happened on the stage. He was stewing at home. He was absolutely stewing, absolutely angry. I looked at his North Node. That was in Pisces, so... He really felt conflicted and not so much so that he almost flipped it to where it was a negative aspect of his North Node of Pisces where he dreamt in himself this whole fantasy or these people are out to get me or you want to make a fool of me 
It's a dark side to that Pisces energy when it is wronged. When it's right, it's really good. When it's wrong, it does things that are dark, dirty, deceptive, manipulative. And that's what he did. He put on this face on stage as if he was fine, as if everything was okay, only to find out that inside of himself, that Pisces part of him that didn't want to show that, he was hurt, devastated. He felt double teamed. He felt humiliated. He felt like everybody in his town was going to feel this way or that way, rather than having a mature set of mind that would have said, I'm not going I know what you're trying to do. I'm not interested in Scott. You could have had that conversation at home, but instead you came to do this. And it was like, you know, I came all the way out here to be made a fool of. Um, yeah, so I'm looking at him and also um, he's got that Saturn and Taurus too that really says that, um, no, I'm going to stay. I want to stay inside these boundaries. I'm going to stay inside these boundaries. I'm going to be slow on what I do, slow on making decisions. This is not something I'm trying to do. And he felt pushed and rushed into something. His life path at the time was a number, or excuse me, his life path was a number six. And so similar to Scott's, these were two responsible people, actually. They both are responsible. They both were caretaker type of people. They both would be there to give you a ride or lend you a couple of bucks or work overtime on their, in their jobs. Um, Jonathan's personal year was a four. And so with that being a number four, he definitely would have been upset once again, because for him to do everything, he wants, he wanted it just right. Everything had to be just right. I need to know everything that's going on. I need the step by steps. Um, dot those I's, cross those T's, tell me what's going on. Give me agenda. Give me the plans. And when they surprised him like that, that just went against his his personal life path at that time. And it ended up where someone lost their life. Now, uh, I do believe that Jonathan is out. He's spent 22 years incarcerated. Um, he pretty much looks the same, except for heavier. He lives here in my state, but not by me. Um, but this is a crime that should not have happened. And it's a it was a battle of egos. It was a selfishness beyond belief. It was egos where I want what I want when I want it versus I don't want anybody playing games with me, playing mind games with me, um, sh making a fool of me, making me feel ashamed, as well as coupled with uh, mental health issues that Jonathan had, long standing, long history of mental health issues, and had that friend who jumped into their business had known that, perhaps she would have done something different, but one never knows. Thank you guys. That is the story of Scott Amador and Jonathan Smith from The Jenny Jones Show. Subscribe, share, tell somebody you know, thumbs up, and leave me a comment. Have a great day.